the Golden Lion for Lifetime Achievement goes to Jimmy Darham. El sol de mañana, el sol matinal. Mañana va a hacer sol, churuk, al sham. Morgen sun, morgen sun. Chao, pasaje, ilios. Dobra utro, manguanani, el sol de matina. Thank you. This is not a prize in my mind. It is not a prize for my work. It is an award for working. So it means I need to be more serious at my work. And if I can be more serious and make people laugh at the same time and make them be on the side of human liberation at the same time, then I begin to fulfill my responsibility. And it's, it is my responsibility as an artist anyway. It's just a, an extra weight to it now. It is not possible to stop, is it? You do dream. Other people dream. You do have imagination. Everything has imagination. So, I thought when I first got this award, maybe they think I'm going to stop working. <laughs> but I'm not going to stop working because you cannot. You're, you're here alive on the world, so you don't stop working. My body gets weaker and stranger, but my art ought to get stronger and stranger if my plan works. <laughs> In my life, I don't know to separate art from other parts of life. And I don't know to separate politics from other parts of life. But I do think, because of that maybe, the things that I make that become art are made from things that are in the world, things that are in our social and natural world. This is the kind of material I use. Someone said I use natural material, but I love plastic, I love glass, and I would like to use supernatural material, but I've never seen any. So I use natural material. It means marble, it means granite, it means anything that's part of the world. We are then part of this world. And I have no choice but to make my art in this world. If I want to sit in my studio and make art, I would not do it. I don't have any art to make on my own. I, I only know to interact with the world. I want to be a listener and a speaker in the entire world as much as I see it. Whether I'm doing art or poetry or singing or doing politics, it's all the same for me. I just want to be part of the world. For me, it is a, a beautiful privilege. And because it is such a privilege, it is more a responsibility. Because it means I can do something that the world, sometimes some of the world accepts so then I have a great responsibility to be as I say encouraging too much. I should stop saying the word encouraging 
But that's what I mean. I have a responsibility to make art that encourages us. That means it must be political to me. And it doesn't mean that it should be instructional or didactic or have any message. Only that art, like music, like books, should be for our liberation, for our continuing freedom. When I think about what is ready-made and what is not, and I think about Marcel Duchamp and this past century of artist with Duchamp, because he is always with us, but so is Michelangelo, so is every, Jan Hut told me years ago, every artist is contemporary. So I am a contemporary with Caravaggio. I am a contemporary with Marcel Duchamp, and I am a contemporary of Elisa Strina, a young Italian artist that was my student 15 years ago. <laughs> Artists are contemporary with each other, always, always. But there is this European idea that an artist must make something and then it is art. To make something doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go out in Umbria and find some dirt, dirt called umber and burn it to make burnt umber and mix it up with some linseed oil that you get from the linsen tree. <laughs> it doesn't mean this, that you have to paint. Whatever an artist does, if it is good, it is art. This is the great freedom that we have now. We always had it, but society in Europe didn't know that we had it. The artist always knew it. But when I think of my work, when we first moved to Europe, 1994, I saw a great big giant horse in a field in Belgium. I tried to make friends with him, but he was afraid of me. He's much bigger than me, but he was. And I thought someday I will make an art world work using the biggest animals of Europe. And I thought I would do this just before I die. But then, as time passed, I thought, I'm not so interested in dying. Better to make the art. And so I, I did these things last year. And I took the skulls, the actual skulls, of the largest animals of Europe, the mammals of Europe. Not the whales, not the seals but the land animals, and they are amazing. There are two kinds of cattle in Italy that are the largest cattle in the world, and one is the Chianina, and they're only used for steak now. They're only used for meat. But these and the Maramema cattle are the cattle that you see on cave paintings 20,000, 40,000 years ago. This is the original cattle of the world. And the only ones left are in Italy. <laughs> but this animal is a deer from Germany. I live most of the time in Berlin, Germany. But look at what, a, look at what an animal he is. He has to go through the forest. How can he go through the forest with <laughs> these things? It is an amazing piece of land, Europe. And these animals are with us constantly. We pretend that we don't see them. Or we pretend that, they're, that if they're not useful, if they're not good to eat, then they're not really there. So I just, I didn't want to show anybody anything, but I wanted to show 
us these animals. So I didn't want to draw them, I didn't want to photograph them, and I didn't want to sculpt them. So this is not the body of this deer, but it's the same size, he's too big, but he's the same size as this deer would have been. But when you see the skull of an animal, the power stays there. And we know this from ourselves. If you see the skull of a human, there is some power that stays there. All the idiot motorcycle freaks in California put a skull on there <laughs> to try to get some of this power of our, of whatever this is. It's some sort of magic, we don't even know what it is. But I wanted to, I wanted my sociality of art to include all of us, to include the deers and the bears and the lynxes and the bison. And I wanted to, I wanted us to say, yeah, isn't that an amazing animal? <laughs> Everything that one does is connected to one's, I don't have any roots because I have feet, I don't have, I don't have any, I'm not a plant, but <laughs> you are your entire life. So it is there in many ways, the same as a French artist, the same as Marcel Duchamp. <laughs> but more especially the same as Caravaggio. What could be more Italian than his paintings? Uh, maybe at the time, he wouldn't have called himself a super Italian, but he was. <laughs> maybe now, some parts of Italy don't want to say, this is our, this is our Italian artist. Maybe some members of the church still don't want to say that. <laughs> You don't escape your roots, but you don't rely on them. You don't rely on your background. You rely on your background, mid-ground, foreground. You rely on your world. I found this stone that's in the Giardini in Berlin at a stone store that I go to quite often because I do other things with stone. And the man had just got it. And I loved it because it's magic stone, but it was too big and too expensive for Marie, for me. And Maria Teresa said, go ahead and buy it, you can use it later. That was two years ago. So I bought it, didn't have the money, but I bought it. and. I just wanted to show this incredible stone. And then I said, put a little more art into it. <laughs> that I said, I will just tell the history of this stone, but it is such a magic stone. When I first thought that, I didn't, I didn't realize what a, magic, what a magic stone it is. The first life on Earth begins probably inside this kind of stone. So there is still life in this stone. And it is the kind of life that is pre-bacteria. It is called archaea. And it turns out most life on Earth is archaea. Not fungi, not plants, not animals, not bacteria but this almost invisible stuff that lives on the floor of the ocean, under the ocean, in stones. This is something that we hardly know, just like we hardly know our animals. We hardly know the world we live in. And for me, this comes with the European idea of let's all go to heaven and forget this earth. But I'm not sure I would like heaven. There's no chairs, there's no place to sit. There's nothing to do up there except sing songs. So I want to stay here. 
I don't want to go to heaven. I love the earth.